We seekers are on a quest, a quest to discover truth and meaning. Sometimes we think we've found it, wrapped up, glimmering with newness, straight off the intellectual assembly line. All the answers right here for us and others, if they'd only listen. But truth has a way of coming in disguise, sometimes wearing rags and sometimes finery, but so often cloaked from our immediate sight. And sometimes that which we have rejected, that which we have let go of or decided was only for others, but not for us, can be our teacher. Let our morning assembly be an acknowledgement of the never-ending journey toward truth and meaning and our appreciation of those we learn from along the way. Let us begin, for it is good that we've called ourselves together in community this morning. When people go to the table to light a candle, we naturally focus on the flame. Yet as the paraffin of the candle, the cotton of the wick, the potassium chlorate and sulfur of the match, and the oxygen in the air around us that makes that flame possible. Lighting a candle is both a personal practice and a shared experience. For those who wish, I invite you to come to the table and light a candle for whatever reason or reasons you may have in your mind or heart. We give ourselves this special time in our morning assembly for those who need it, for to fulfill a need in another is a gift we can all appreciate and share. Dan will provide a gift of music as together we sit quietly and perhaps in our mind light a bouquet of candles. I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we light our chalice and remind ourselves of the affirmation that inspires us as a people of this free faith. This morning's chalice lighting text comes from Homi de Marcos, leader of the Unitarian Church of Barcelona, Spain. He writes, 
In this solemn moment, when voices subside, when silence can be heard, we light this chalice for all who have preceded us and for those who will follow us. We light the chalice for those who made possible that we are here today because in spite of their failings and limitations, a dream moved them to light a chalice just as we are doing. And for those who will burn a flame when we are no longer, when they will renew this light full of hope and enthusiasm, this light shines for all of them, for those who came before and for those who will come later, and for us who are living in between, linking past and future together. Now please join me in our spoken affirmation. The words are in the morning program. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in freedom, and to help one another. Please be seated. Our opening thought this morning is a selection from Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. He called Song of Myself. I have heard what the talkers were talking, the talk of the beginning and the end. But I do not talk of the beginning or the end. There was never any more inception than there is now, nor any more youth or age than there is now, and will never be any more perfection than there is now nor any more heaven or hell than there is now. Urge and urge and urge, always the procreant urge of the world. Out of the dimness opposite equals advance, always substance and increase, always a knit of identity, always distinction, always a breed of life. To elaborate is no avail. Learned and unlearned feel that it is so. Sure as the most certain sure, Plumb in the upright, well entreated, braced in the beams. Stout as a horse, affectionate, haughty, electrical. I in this mystery, here we stand. Clear and sweet is my soul, and clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. Lack one, lacks both, and the unseen is proven by the seen, till that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn showing the best and dividing it from the worst. Age vexes age. Shall I postpone my acceptation and realization and scream at my eyes that they turn from gazing after and down the road and forthwith cipher and show me to assent exactly the value of one and exactly the value of two and which is ahead? And that's the end of Walt Whitman's selection. Now, if you'll kindly rise and body your spirit as together we sing song number one in the gray hymnal. It's titled, May Nothing Evil Cross This Door. Touching our lips with holy wine Till every casual corner comes into our shrine With laughter drown the raucous shout And though these sheltering walls are thin May they be strong to keep Oh. 
We're honored to have the venerable Tashi Nima with us this morning. You can read Tashi's bio in the morning program. Welcome back, Tashi, to our free pulpit. It's good to have you with us again. Good morning. It's a <clears throat> morning reading from the Anatta Lakana Sutta of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Surely, whatever form, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness, past, present, or future, internal or external, coarse or fine, low or lofty, far or near, all must be regarded with proper wisdom according to reality. Thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. I invite you, if you are so disposed, to lower your eyes. They don't have to be completely closed. And breathe. actually my first uh, physical uh, visit in over a year. Uh, I was uh, sharing with some of you, I've been many places during this time, perhaps more than usual. I've been to my usual Mexico and Chile and Colombia and Venezuela, Taiwan, <laughs> Germany, Spain, but all on Zoom. <laughs> and uh, so today is the, the first time I'm uh, meeting people not in little squares, but in the <laughs> but in the flesh, and I'm happy that it's here. Uh, always like returning here to Red River. Today's reading may have sounded a little bit strange, right? We're talking about whatever body, whatever function of mind, past, present, or future, internal or external, should be regarded with proper wisdom. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. And at another time, the Buddha said, both actions and their consequences exist, but a doer of the action is not observable. Now, perhaps this is one of the most misunderstood teachings in Buddhism. A lot of people think that Buddhism preaches no self. The term that is mistranslated as no self is anatman. And what it means literally in Sanskrit is not self, not no self. There's a big difference between not self 
And what the Buddha was trying to tell us is not to define us ontologically, but to tell us to avoid identifying with stuff that is necessarily in the past. You are not the same person you were yesterday. Not physically, not mentally, not in any possible way. You're certainly not the same person you were when you were a child. You're not the same person you will be when you leave here today. Why? Because we're all experiencing changes, both physical, emotional, intellectual, and some would even say spiritual. So the teaching is that if we identify with that which we were at one point, or that which we thought we were, we actually limit our possibilities. We are living in a little, remember Polaroids? In a little Polaroid of a particular time, instead of experiencing reality. I had a friend that I traveled with him for some time, uh, years and years ago, and he's one of these people who walks around with the tourist guide book and stands in front of monuments, and instead of experiencing the monument, he reads about it. <laughs> and I finally took the little uh, tourist guide and hid it from him. And <laughs> at first he was furious, and then finally he said, I actually get to see stuff now. <laughs> and this is us. We walk through life with a little guidebook, and the little guidebook is full of pictures of who we were, how we thought, how we felt, what others thought we should be, how others thought we should live, whatever roles they had for us prepared. And we live according to that, which means we're living in the past. Sometimes we're not even living in our own past. We're living in somebody else's past. And that, my friends, is a waste of life. It's a waste of opportunity. It's a waste of reality. Every single moment is new. Every single moment of your life is different from any other moment that went on before and from any other moment that will ever happen. So there is reason to celebrate and enjoy every single moment without the fixation on what I should be, what I must be, what I was, right? or like the kids say, they say that's the way I roll. And nobody rolls any particular way because we're not balls. We are sentient beings who have the capacity to choose to turn right or left or back or forward. We do not have to play by a script. And that is the script of the self. Right? This is how I'm supposed to be. Those of you who lived your early life as women in this culture and were told this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do. This is how you're supposed to be and this is how you can't be. Know very well what I'm talking about. And by the way, men have not been exempted from that, right? We were told you have to be this, you have to be that, you have to be the strong one, you can't cry, you have to be the the earner, you have to do this, you have to be strong, you have to be brave. Why? Every single one of us has infinite options in front of us, but they depend on cultivating that very strong instruction whenever there's a role that appears in your mind Whenever there's a dictate about how you should be or feel or what you should do, boldly say with the Buddha, this is not mine. 
this I am not, this is not myself. Thank you. Our free pulpit tradition, as you may know, traces back several centuries and was not a gift from the political rulers of the time, but one after a long, difficult struggle that included differing religious traditions. The term can be misleading in one aspect, and you can probably guess what that is. The pulpit is free and that a speaker may tell the truth that resides in their heart without fear of retaliation from the congregation but church as a community and an institution cannot exist without the financial foundation to render unto the water bill and the lawn service that which they require. This is why each week we pause so those who wish may bring their gifts to the table or you're invited to open the church app on your mobile device, tap the donate tab on the top right of the home screen and follow the prompts. Our closing song this morning is number 123, Spirit of Life. Please rise and body our spirit, and if you would, remain standing for a parting thought and extinguishing the chalice. Now, if you'll hold on to your hymnal and turn to reading 596, because it will serve as our parting thought this morning. I'll read the first part, and if you'll read the second. Let us cultivate boundless goodwill. Let none deceive another or despise any being. Let none in anger or ill will wish another harm, even as a mother watches over her child, so with boundless mind should one cherish all living beings, radiating friendliness over the whole world, above, below, and all around, without distinction. Now please join me in extinguishing our chalice. The words are in your morning program. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again.